Hi everybody. I just rented this place to become my workshop. It is a former office space which has been abandoned like 20 years ago, but uh, by the state of it, it looks like it hasn't been touched for 30 or 40 years. There's a lot to be done to make it a workspace and taking out the old furniture and trash is the first thing to do. There are a few shelves built in the walls and as I don't have any use for them, I'm just cutting them away with angle grinder. Some metal parts of the shelf still look okay, so I will save them for later. The electricity is in very bad condition. Those are aluminum wires coated in cloth, dipped in a tar of sort. This was a typical electrical wiring in Czechoslovakian houses 50 years ago. The wires are still alive, but I don't dare to use them, so I'm just disconnecting and isolating everything. The windows are covered by a billboard hanging outside, so I don't have a clear view, but that's okay. The drapes are not, so I'm getting rid of them. The floor is covered in PVC, which was typical for offices and houses of that time. Here the PVC is glued to the floor and the glue is still sticky and smells really bad, so I decided to take it out. Despite having a radiator, there is no heating in the building, which will become a thing to solve in the near future. But this footage is from August and the temperature is still around 20 degrees Celsius. The PVC glue is on the bottom of the wall as well. It held the strips of another PVC to make it more pretty, I guess. It needs to be scraped away. Next thing is patching the walls. The spots below windows are spongy and it looks like they have been exposed to water. There is no sign of leakage now, so probably the windows had been opened during rain. I'm pulling a lot of nails from the walls and patching the holes with cement putty. Once the putty sets, I'm sending it to be nice and smooth. I want the floor to be even, so I decided to pour a layer of self-leveling concrete mixture. The bag weighs 25 kilos and the mixture covers around 2 square meters for thickness around 5 millimeters. I'm using white spatula for spreading the mixture around and special rotating rubber cylinder to pop up any air bubbles that stayed in the mixture. The concrete sets in 30 minutes, so I need to work fast. This is more of a two-man job as it has to be done in one go. The room has 14 square meters and I used 5 bags, that is 120 kilos of the mixture. And before doing anything else, I need to vacuum the dust which has set to on the walls and the floor. Since I'll be shooting videos in this space, I'm going to paint the walls in slightly grey color. The white would result in high contrast and having white walls in a workshop doesn't seem to be a good idea anyway. The color has to be neutral because it would affect the coloring of the videos. I'm painting the walls with a clear penetrating liquid first. This will make the previous paint harder, more even and lower its absorption so it doesn't suck in the much more expensive final paint. This stuff is easy to work with, it doesn't smell or stick to anything and it's cheap. For the final coat of paint I'm using a white base paint mixed with black tinting color. I'm going for a mid grayish hue, not too dark, not too light, if that makes any sense. I don't have any experience with mixing the colors or wall painting for that matter, so I'm using the good old trial and error procedure. It doesn't matter in a space like this and I can always paint over, right? The paint looks much darker and uneven when it is wet, but once it dries out it looks pretty good. And I decided not to use the current buzz lights, so from now on I'm going back to the dark age and the only source of the light will be the portable construction. Little did I know that it will take two months to properly fix the lights. The ceiling will be in much lighter shade of grey and I want to make the transition sharp, so I will use masking tape to divide the surfaces. I'm using a laser level to have the transition in the same height around the shop and I learned that neither the floor nor the ceiling are level. 
The ceiling goes up towards the window and the floor goes down towards the window. Not exactly a problem for the painting, but I need to take it into consideration in the future. And one side note, it is better to do the ceiling first and the walls later. The law of gravity is merciless and unforgiving and the ceiling paint really likes to drip down onto the walls. All of that up until now took 7 afternoons. That's all the time I had set aside for the remodeling and now I had to postpone everything else for 2 months. Let's fast forward and do the lights. For lighting I picked 10 meters of LED strip with the total power of 200 watts. For powering the LEDs I'm using a dedicated 240 watt power supply. It has a dimming functionality in case the 200 watt of the LEDs will shine too much. I want to have a nice even spread light, so I will mount it in a way it will shine to the ceiling. For mounting I will use a 90 degree angle bracket and bend it to approximately 130 degrees and mount it to the wall. The brackets are spread 80 cm apart and will hold aluminum strip. I will glue the aluminum strip to the bracket with a metal epoxy, clamp it and let it settle overnight. Then I'm going to use the double sided tape which is on the LED strip and glue it to the aluminum strip. It should hold just fine and the aluminum will help cooling the LEDs. The color temperature is 4000 Kelvin which is slightly cooler than the noon sun. This will help the videos to look natural. Luckily enough, in the room next to mine is a good source of three-phase power, which I will use for my shop as well. I'm pulling a fat 5-wire cable with cross-section of 4 square millimeters. I will use one phase for powering the lights and other stationary equipment. The other two phases I will use for the power sockets, which will be evenly distributed alongside two walls under the future workbenches. I'm not sure about the workshop layout yet, so I'm not going to put any power sockets above the non-existing workbenches yet. Once I will do few projects in the shop and learn more about the workflow, then I can add power sockets where I will see fit. For distributing the power socket cables, I'm using a plastic wire duct which is to be fastened to the wall via plastic wall anchors. The problem with these wall anchors is the quality of the wall. This old building has a classic brick wall with a classic subpar quality. The holes for the anchors have to be precisely drilled otherwise the anchor will not hold. And it is not unusual to hit gap between bricks. In case of the wire duct you can move few centimeters to the left or to the right and try drilling a new hole, but when you try to fasten a power socket you need to hit the right place on the first go. This is usually a source of great frustration for me. Once I mounted all the hardware, I can move to the wiring of the control panel. Since I'm not planning to use the combined three phases, I'm using three separate 16 amp B-class miniature circuit breakers. The idea is when some equipment fails, it will trip the circuit breaker of that particular phase and not all of them, so at least the lights will stay on. I'm also adding a RCD, which is basically for protecting against electrocution. Once I will have the workbenches, I will ground them via PE wire, as were requested by the code. And that's about it. This project took me 11 days to finish, spent over 2 months and cost around $600. I'm quite happy with the result, it is a decent place to work in. Now I have to move all my stuff here, maybe insulate the windows, design the layout, build workbenches and a lot of fun in general. So thanks for watching and see you next time.